Why hello there! In my last video, we let's made us a character for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and other strangeness. And in my next video, I'll be taking a more in-depth look at After the Bomb. So I figured that in between those two, I would take some time to talk about how the one mutated into the other. And I figured I might as well just cover the entire series while I'm at it. So our story begins in September of 1985 with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness, a 112-page book which contained most of a role-playing game, although there are constant references that additional, or in some cases required, information can be found in Heroes Unlimited. But it did have full rules for creating mutant animal characters with 76 mechanically distinct animal options, four adventures, and a moderate supply of equipment and NPCs, also an eight-page Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic. And I did a whole video on this one, so watch that if you want more information. Also, I'm just going to be referring to this as TMNT from now on, because I don't want to have to say Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness over and over and over again. So on to January 1986 and the release of the first book in the second series we're talking about here, After the Bomb, which was a 48-page post-apocalyptic campaign setting for TMNT. As such, it concerned itself primarily with the peoples, places, and events of the northeastern coast of the United States in the aftermath of a nuclear war. It provided a large amount of settings and NPCs, new character backgrounds, six adventures, and introduces mutant insects into the mix, but not as playable species. Then June 1986 brought us Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures, a 48-page collection of four short and one longer adventures, plus new rules for super-powered mutant animal characters. Although that section is pretty much just referring you to Heroes Unlimited and not actual content. Also, there was a 10-page Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic. And in October of 1986, we got Road Hogs, which is part of the After the Bomb product line, but is branded as a TMNT supplement, but also compatible with Heroes Unlimited. They were really pushing Heroes Unlimited. It is a 48-page book containing setting information which expands the After the Bomb setting to include the West Coast of the United States, new character backgrounds, and finally expanding the animal selection with 22 new options, finally including some aquatic ones, plus a focus on vehicle and vehicular combat rules. It is basically the Mad Max Car Wars expansion for this game. It also has four adventures and a nine-page comic which was unique to the setting, but still related to the Turtles. Which brings us to 1987 and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Guide to the Universe, a 48-page book containing rules and related skills for air and spacecraft, as well as detailing various alien races from the comics. It also included four adventures and a 10-page Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic. 1987 also brought the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon, which is notable because in a 2007 interview on the Space Station Liberty podcast, an episode which for some reason has been removed, Kevin Sambita commented on the popularity of this much more kid-friendly version of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, stating, No self-respecting teenager, even if he thought the turtles were cool, or thought the Ninja Turtle game was cool, was going to be caught dead playing it. So our sales plummeted from 50,000 copies in a year to 12,000, and the next year that dropped to 6,000. Which could be why in June 1988, Mutants Down Under was released with much less prominent Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle branding, simply just stating it to be compatible with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and of course Heroes Unlimited which at this point actually did contain the mutant animal character rules from the core book, albeit with a much more limited selection. Mutants Down Under is a 48-page book that expands the After the Bomb setting to post-apocalyptic Australia with all the relevant peoples, places, etc., and contains new backgrounds, 29 new Australian animal options, new skills and psionic abilities, plus giant riding insects, rules for airships, and four adventures. You can fit a lot of stuff in a book when you don't use up 10 pages on a comic. 
1988 was also the year that saw the revised edition of the core rulebook, which pretty much just removed some objectionable content that they had been getting complaints about. But on to April 1989, which saw the release of Transdimensional Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, an ambitious 112-page supplement covering time and dimension travel, including things like alternate timelines. It included new backgrounds, 21 new prehistoric animal options, dinosaurs and prehistoric mammals, but also now options for mutant humans and other hominids, which got a little weird because to get mutant abilities you had to trade in your human characteristics for bioe points, and that got weird. There was also time travel related and historical skills and equipment, and one adventure? Oh, and also wizard magic? For some reason, I guess there's wizards in the past. Then in November 1989, Truckin' Turtles was released, a 48-page supplement with six connected adventures and not really much else to say about that one. So into the 1990s and a slew of new products, starting in March 1990 with Turtles Go Hollywood, another 48-page book with six connected adventures. And in July 1990, Mutants of the Yucatan, which notably is branded as After the Bomb Book 4 rather than as a TMNT supplement, and is just promoted as being compatible with Heroes Unlimited, Ninjas and Super Spies, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Rifts. Another 48-page supplement, this time expanding the After the Bomb setting to the Yucatan Peninsula. It includes new backgrounds, 25 new animal options, including four kinds of bat, some new skills and all of the relevant persons, places, organizations, etc. of this new region. 1990 also saw the release of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles RPG Accessory Pack, which was the last product to feature the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle branding. It contained an Adventures in the Yucatan book with two adventures, as there were none in the actual book, as well as game shields for After the Bomb and TMNT including the full list of animal options from all of the books, including the at the time not yet released Mutants of Avalon. So, January 1991, Mutants of Avalon, keeping the After the Bomb branding being book 5 and completely removing any TMNT references from the cover, but still stating compatibility within. An 80-page supplement bringing After the Bomb to a post-apocalyptic Britain with all the relevant places, people, etc., it contains new backgrounds with an additional social ranking system, 17 new animal options, it says 18, but I only count 17, and very much not the ones listed on the game shield. Maybe it wasn't the greatest idea to publish a list of content from an unfinished book. There's also new options for giant riding insects, and more importantly, giant snails and slugs. And also, druidic magic, because... They already had wizard magic, so why not? Also, five adventures. But now onto January 1992 and the fifth printing of After the Bomb, which like the previous two books has now dropped the TMNT branding from the cover, rebranding it simply as After the Bomb, Book 1. But it is otherwise the same. Which brings us to March 1992 and Mutants in Orbit, which is branded simply as an adventure and source book for After the Bomb and Rifts. And I think it's worth noting at this point, After the Bomb does not have a core rule book. It is only a series of supplements with listed compatibility with TMNT, Heroes Unlimited, Ninjas and Super Spies, and Rifts. But I digress. Mutants in Orbit is a 112-page book expanding the After the Bomb setting out to space with orbital colonies and all the way out to Mars with information on various technologies, space stations, life in space, etc. It includes new space backgrounds and skills, a system for random mutations that give additional powers, and actually includes the abilities instead of just referring you to Heroes Unlimited, and most importantly, finally adds rules for mutant insects, with seven options, bringing the grand total up to 199. If only they had actually had 18 in Mutants of Avalon. Also, a lot of the content here is basically doubled, providing things for TMNT, Heroes Unlimited, etc., and then again for Rifts, so depending on the system that you're using, a large amount of the book is not going to be useful for you. 
Anyway, then nothing happened for nine years, but in December 2001 we got After the Bomb, 2nd Edition, which is a complete role-playing game. Well, as complete as the original TMNT book at least. After the Bomb is now a 224-page book, gone is any branding or reference to mutant turtles of a teenage variety, because they didn't have the license anymore, and if you look at the way things were going, they had kind of been distancing After the Bomb from the TMNT branding for a while. The backstory was updated, with a strong focus on genetic engineering, and in particular a manufactured virus that caused all these spontaneous humanoid mutations in animals, so surprisingly they actually did update it to try and make it more relevant with modern technology. Now reasonably, they could have included all 199 animal options from the previous books, but of course they didn't do that. What they do have is most of the animal species from TMNT, with a notable absence of the aardvark, baboon, gorilla, orangutan, cheetah, tiger, hippopotamus, and rhinoceros. Despite cheetahs and rhinoceroses being referenced, the inclusion of a tiger NPC, and the detailing of an entire population of purebred mutant baboons being included in the setting description, However, several species have also been expanded with one more kind of bear, variant stats for hawks and eagles, and also turtles and snapping turtles, as well as a very large expansion to dog breeds, full variable stats for 38 breeds of dog, which is, uh, you know, a sizable addition. Also being brought back for Mutants of Avalon, they've included seagulls and geese, as well as the human mutants from Transdimensional TMNT, and uh, Chipmunk was added as its own entry. It was previously just listed as a kind of squirrel without unique stats, so one new standard animal type. However, the big thing that they added was purebred mutants, which are a very specific breed of mutant animal, throwbacks, which are either intentionally resurrected extinct species or ones who have had their dormant genes reactivated by mutation, and chimeras, which are intentionally crossbred animals like spider goats, a thing that actually exists. The difference with these is that they start with and are often limited in their mutations. So just for example, the purebred Jack Russell starts with full human hands, bipedal stance, speech, and looks, so they basically just kind of look like a little dude. Whereas the throwback passenger pigeons have partial speech, but are otherwise just regular birds with all of these examples also gaining some automatic abilities, but also not being able to sell or spend BioE points for human attributes, only on size and psionics. So overall, like, 97 options, counting dog breeds as one option. Although they do provide a full list for rolling up any of the species, excluding most of the ones I mentioned as not being included, referring you to whichever After the Bomb book contains them, or to Heroes Unlimited in the case of the tiger, because of the absent species, that's the only one that appears in the limited selection in Heroes Unlimited, and I kind of feel like it just wasn't included here so that they could refer you to Heroes Unlimited. But that doesn't really work out quite that well despite what they claim, because the previous books actually aren't that compatible with After the Bomb. Just for an example, let us look at The Humble Squirrel. In TMNT, a squirrel's size is 1, in After the Bomb it is 3. In both, they get 80 BioE points. In TMNT, they get plus 1 to their physical prowess and plus 4 to speed. In After the Bomb, they get plus 2 to physical prowess and plus 6 to speed. In TMNT, they can have Climbing Claws that deal 1d4 damage. In After the Bomb, they can have Sharp Nails that deal 1d6 damage, and or Climbing Claws that deal 2d4 damage. In both games, they have access to Advanced Hearing and Gliding if they are a Flying Squirrel, but in After the Bomb, they also automatically get Advanced Vision and have the option of 10 additional abilities, plus 3 disadvantages that they can take for extra BioE points. So even if you have the old books, you're either going to have to accept that those animals will be weaker and have less options, or go through all the trouble of updating them for the new game. 
In addition to the expanded animal powers and new disadvantages, the skills, psionics, and combat have also been expanded and or updated with the notable addition of having a hand-to-hand -hand fighting style for quadruped characters. Although the thing here is that this book does very much feel more so updated than it does new. Like, large sections of text are just copied from the TMNT or After the Bomb books, so it very much feels like a collection of content from the 1980s and 1990s just republished with some minor updates instead of, like, a new version of the game for 2001. And that's pretty much the end of the story. I honestly doubt we'll be seeing another edition of After the Bomb, considering that Palladium can just keep selling the old books now without having to reprint them. However, I will be coming back to After the Bomb with a full review of the second edition, revised edition, whatever it is, so keep an eye out for that, and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, check out the other videos, you know, all of that YouTube stuff. And until next time, keep on rolling.